Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Again. Like, donde esta fuego? Leaving out the blue, three hundred dollar loot. I don't need to bless my cash. I, I, I'm the living proof. You a funny guy, spook. Mitchy, Mitch, I got the juice. Give me the loot, give me the loot, give me the loot, give me the loot. Leaving, leaving out the blue, three hundred dollar loot. I don't need to bless my cash. I, I, I'm the living proof. You a funny guy, spook. Mitchy, Mitch, I got the juice. Give me the loot, give me the loot, give me the loot, let me the loot. Hey, got a couple of crowns. Want me to take a dime? I don't want that pack. I need that cash. I need it now, ba baby. What's it worth? No JG. This can't, can't play me. Jesus can't even save me. Model bitch, you pay me. Ain't no hawk, no safety. We ain't dancing, but you prancing to the gas. Roll up the gas, not gonna blast. Yeah, Jimmy on that neutron. I'm too high, you lukewarm. Make your boo dry, cause I'm too gone. Took your bad, now you're Luga. Boy, 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 you a goofball. Hi, my name is Jawan Jennings. And I'm Cedric Williams. And welcome to PVAMU TV. Now today, you guys, we have a special, special, extra special guest. We have Denzel Whitaker here. Ah! Hey, everybody. How y'all doing? I'm so excited. <laughs> We're so excited. So yes, sir, I want yes. you to go first. All right. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and start it off. So nah. out of all of the roles that you played mm -hmm. in everything that you've been in, what was the cringiest role that you've been in? Cringiest? Cringiest. Cringiest? Ooh. That's a fantastic question. Cringiest. Mm. Cringiest? <laughs> uh, I once did an underwater movie called Submerge. Okay. And that was where uh, it was me and maybe like a gang of uh, seven people, mm -hmm. give or take, right? Mm -hmm. We're all in the back of this limousine. Now this limousine, we get caught in the crossfire, some danger, some, some stuff that's out of our hands. Mm -hmm. The uh, limo careens off the highway and plummets into the ocean and then it literally submerges underwater. Mm -hmm. I can't swim. So that is very cringy for me oh, no. to be in a limo movie Hypothetically underwater, underwater where yeah. we did multiple scenes where I'm supposed to be swimming to the top and oh my you know my first day showing up <laughs> I was supposed to be dead underwater uh, Next thing you know, they fill the entire limo with water and we're like trying to fight our way out and I can't swim mm -hmm. So that's just cringy for me other than that working with like tons of fake blood. I once mm -hmm. did a, a, a Wes Craven film called uh the working title was 25-8. It came out as my soul to take. I was just about to ask you about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, it took the words right out of my mouth. So, so my soul to take where I, I got stabbed in the stomach. And mm -hmm. after you, you put on so much fake blood, it starts to dry See, up and then no. it's cold. They use packs? Oh. What, huh? what do they use for fake blood? The packs? Or... Uh, we, did it, we did kind of like a prop gag for when I initially get stabbed, but then we like cut you know, they spray on the blood and then mm -hmm. you kind of hold this uh, this sponge mm -hmm. and as you squeeze on the sponge, more blood actually comes out. Oh, so out. you got squeezing and act like Yeah, it's, but, okay. it's, but it's cold, you know? Yikes. You don't warm up fake blood, so you just, and then it starts to dry and it gets crusty, so yeah. that might actually be more cringeworthy than being underwater, mm -hmm. but yeah. So um, would you do um, another scary movie? Yeah, yeah, I do one. Mm -hmm. I ain't doing nothing with like demons and uh, <laughs> I'm not doing demons. Not doing demons. I won't do that. Yeah, yeah I'll do okay. that. Um, I don't want that energy. No, 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 no. No, no, no. no I, don't okay. I, I fear God too much to be uh, doing devil work. So, right, right. Yeah, right. That's, that's not me. Plus, too, like, a lot of those films, like The Exorcist and things like that, or Poltergeist, like, there's been stories of actual uh, mm -hmm. rare supernatural events happening. Wow. Mm -hmm. Or actors not being able to break that. Yeah, because we... What we do as actors, and a lot of people may say, oh man, acting's easy, like mm -hmm. I could do that, but really, if you're giving it your all and you're transforming yourself uh, within your roles, you know, you dedicate yourself to that role and you gotta believe it, because mm -hmm. if I believe it, then you guys believe it, well, exactly. I'm supposed to be quote unquote possessed, I gotta give myself to that or do the research. Mm -hmm. I ain't having that in my life. Yep. Nope. Okay. You ain't about to introduce that to me. Sorry. Dang. No nope. Dang, okay, so on me? Yeah. Okay, so my question is, Tips and advice for um, working actors or you know aspiring actors to getting in the industry mm -hmm. in terms of hustling and really um, getting roles. What okay. are some advice and tips? Um, first and foremost, there's no blueprint to the acting game at mm -hmm. all. There, there really isn't. Uh, I got started when I was 10 and I'm very thankful 
to get started at that age because if I were to do that now, I don't know, to be honest with you. Okay. It's, it's a little bit different when you got to uh, provide for yourself, uh, you know, as a man or a woman outside of the house, like what you got to do for survival, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Uh, whereas when I got started at 10, there was like a luxury of finding out the craft, having that time to explore it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I always advise to anybody like, set yourself up for success, not failure, meaning like, save some money, mm -hmm. make sure you have a decent plan. If you gotta work a second job, you gotta work a second job. If you gotta work, work a third job, you gotta work a third job. Most entrepreneurs of any type of business will tell you you should have several streams of income coming in. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that doesn't stop with your nine to five. Once you get off, you got all of these hours in between yeah, when you fall jobs. asleep. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do with those hours? You know, uh, Rick Ross, I was watching this interview with him and Joe Budden, and he talks about like why MMG was always on the forefront. It's because he was like, never leave any money on the table. Mm -hmm. You know, if I know that I'm right now chilling at home with the homies or I'm, you know, doing extracurricular activities, whatever it may be, whatever your vice is, like, if I know that same hour can be spent applying it towards my business, well, then I got to get after it. Mm -hmm. And as an actor, your entire business is your being. Like your body is your business. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the clothes you wear, your, your hygiene, how you present yourself, what's your online persona look like, what is your character like in front of people, what do people say behind you? Like a lot of it is vanity. Um, you see how I snuck that hygiene in there? Don't be yeah, musty. Don't be yo, musty, you have to. to. Don't be musty, y'all. He, he, <laughs> he did, he did. Don't, don't be like, musty. Don't call me about musty. It ain't, it ain't them. It ain't them. If anything, it's me. I've been sweating today, so, you know, maybe. <laughs> no, but, uh, that's okay. But, but uh, you know, your body is your business, mm -hmm. and that's another thing. instrument, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's another thing that I had to uh, uh, be aware of within my mm -hmm. own business is every single day make sure to take care of my vessel, mm -hmm. make sure to always... Uh, sharpen your sword for instance mm -hmm. you know yeah, what yeah. i mean like if you're new to the game get in acting classes if you got an audition to do you take that audition like don't leave an opportunity on the table take every single opportunity because you're going to put up shots you're going to put up shots in this business more than you will any other business mm -hmm. i like to tell people like in the acting business you are going to have several job interviews you are going to get rejected so many times more yeah. If you're, you know, an architect or whatever it may be, you work in like, you know, your regular whatever hustle it is, you might go in for a couple job interviews, get turned down, whatever, right. you'll get your job. Mm -hmm. Acting, you could go in for three auditions a day, get turned down on all of them, get back yeah. up the next day and you got to get rejected again. Yeah. So keep going. It's not a thing that you could do for like one year, boom, and you're good. Because anybody I found that have done like one, two years in the game, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's a steady rise and you got to know what to do each time you keep rising. Like how do you keep that platform how do you keep that without regressing okay I love that. so speaking yeah. of acting mm -hmm. um how many times have you been featured in a movie is this your first feature film mm -hmm. no no no, okay. no no it's not my first feature film um featured in what, what do you mean by featured as, in as far movie? as being the the main the main act like the, ah, yeah. like, okay um let's see more so this year mm -hmm. yes has been more uh lead roles for myself usually i'm playing like supporting or like you know the best friend to the, to the, i'm always playing like the best friend to the white kid in the right. suburbs you know mm -hmm. what i mean because I, I grew up around white people so naturally yeah. I, I that's what you, you know. play those what you roles. You're familiar yeah. It, yeah. it's my vernacular it's yeah. how i talk it's it's yeah. You're like, oh man, you're like a black white kid. I can't quite figure you out. You're like Donald Glover. Oh my God, you're so Not educated. Donald Glover. Yeah. Which, which is a compliment though, mm -hmm. because dudes like Donald Glover and Jordan Peele are paving the way for what I kind of want to do. Is like, yes. my whole initiative in the game is I've seen so many examples of 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 black men and women who come from poverty or the struggle or I'm tired of like slave movies and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Oh, I was just Where talking about that. That is, is yep. the general scope of Hollywood or what they like to picture Portrayed, us as. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? I came from a good family. Like my parents worked as immensely to make sure that me and my siblings didn't have to go through the same struggle. Like we grew up good. We had money in the house, I'm like food on the table. I got an older brother and an older sister. Okay. Um, but you know what I mean? Like, I, 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 I came from a, a good home. Mm -hmm. And I want to represent what that is. Like, 
What does it mean for, for black people to come from affluence and be able to handle everything that they can handle? What does it mean to just be like a black nerd? Like we're starting to see new shades of more that genre. within yeah. in, in mm-hmm. media and entertainment, but I think we need more of that because that was me growing up and I didn't have enough examples of that. Okay. You know what I mean? So then I had to identify with my own blackness and then to discover it's like, yo, I could be as, as nerdy and talk about NASA as I want, and I could also rock the fresh J's and mm-hmm. Mac on your chick too. Mm-hmm. So it is what it is. And that's my period. <laughs> Speaking that's of, uh, <laughs> so so you getting on on Mac and on chicks and, and the whole race thing. I love it. Uh-huh. Um, so do you have a preference when it comes to dating women? Uh, no, I'm gonna keep it a thousand percent real with you. I don't. Uh, uh, what my god sister would like to say is I'm an unconditional uh, lover, meaning like. Oh. Me too. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, my first girlfriend, she was white. Like, I, I've dated pretty much a, a, a spectrum of it. Mm-hmm. I just had this talk the other day with my co-star. Um, and it's not for nothing. It's not like I'm purposely seeking a specific race. To mm-hmm. be honest, I love women. Like, I love all yeah, different women, shades, it, it, yeah. whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, it's about who the person is. And then there's always an issue of, oh, okay, well, then I got to bring you around my family. And, oh, well, what is my family? Gonna... And all that stuff. I had to throw that out of the wind. And to be honest, it got to me uh, with some of my first real serious relationships. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? With, when I bring a white girl home or a Latin girl home and it's like, oh, oh there, Papa, there goes. Papa, who that white woman? <laughs> there goes Denzel again. You know what I mean? Like that, it's, but it is what it is. And, and, and to be honest with you, on the same respect is like, I don't have. I don't discriminate uh, what race it is mm-hmm. that I choose to date, yeah. but I do have an innate desire within me to also represent my culture the best way possible. Because you ain't about to strip me of my blackness, and you ain't about to have me out here like acting like I don't know where I came from. Wow! wow. I enjoy. It it, it. it. It's the whole complex to me, or at least what I want to continue to portray in media is it's cool to be educated. It's cool to sit at the table and be the only black person there. And guess what? I love my damn fried chicken and watermelon, and you gonna have me represented the same exact way, and whoever I show up with, mm. she might like it too, and she ain't about to call me out and have me dressing up like some Uncle Tom. Nah, that's not about to be it. I'm gonna be me, mm-hmm. but I'm also love all. I've never had a problem not fitting in with a social circle. Right. In fact, I kept more uh, diverse social circles than than just like a secluded one race or in- entity like that. You know, we had this one table back in my high school. We used to call it Little Africa because there was maybe only like Africa. there was maybe only like twenty to twenty three black people within the entire my entire that. high There's school. Was that one table? That yeah, one so table. I even little, had that at one table at my middle school. Little Africa. Right. We little called Africa. Africa. Yeah, we called it Little Africa. But they were mad at me because I never wanted to hang just at the table. Like I'm flown from here to here to here yeah. to here, and that's mm-hmm. how I always been. So. Yeah. You can't, you can't contain that. Like I'm not, I'm, I love my culture. It is mm-hmm. what it is, and I'm gonna date whoever I want to date. And and somehow, some way, the complexities of all that, you're going to see what the new black is in America, whatever we want to call that. You have any? You have any? Uh, you have any crushes on any celebrities that you would to this day? If 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 mine is Jada Pinkett Smith. Okay. Queen. 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 Yeah. Queen. That's a good question, man. <laughs> no, no, no. To be honest, that's a fantastic question. Because mm-hmm. I always used to have celebrity crushes, and, and, I, and I wish I'd had more, but I don't. Um, I do. I let's can see. Line them up in these. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, if you were if you were to pick some out, like like uh, what, what's my girl's name from uh, Fresh Pence back in the day? Um, Nia Long. Nia Long. Yeah. I thought he was gonna okay. say um, who? The little Tati sister. Tati. Yes, Tatiana. Oh Tati. yeah. No, oh yeah, my yeah. god. Yo, she, I love her. She's, Gorgeous. I gotta, I gotta I check her. her out. I don't, I don't know what she looks like now, but so Ashley, bro, yeah, right, oh, Ashley, yeah. We put her on the list. We put Nia Long on the list. You know what I mean? Uh, Selma Hayek used to be a jam of mine when she was in uh, uh, uh what's what's the uh, what, what's her name? Selma Hayek. Ooh, the old school uh, Tarantino Robert Rodriguez film. Uh, they Die by Dawn. No, no, it's not. They Die by Dawn. I'm sorry. From Dust Till Dawn. Oh, uh, if you ever seen her in there where she had the whole snake dance and she dancing on top of the table, mm-hmm. woo! Oh I, gosh. <laughs> um, you see what you did, Cedric? You see what you did? <laughs> Let's get back on top. You know, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, Go so back. I want to talk about the great debaters. Uh huh. In training day, now, what was your experience like for both sets? Like, how was it? 
Training day, I was, I was, I was very uh, novice to the mm-hmm. business. That was actually my first role. Mm-hmm. It was I know, you started off be... as a background actor and yes. then was moved up to exactly. more important. Okay. Yeah, okay. There we go. You know, I did my research. I, okay. I, I, <laughs> good research. work. Good work. Um, but yeah, that, that literally was my first role. So more of that was me stepping on set and uh, being exposed to everything. And yeah, I'm not right. really know how a set is supposed to run. and. You know, I'm just excited. It's free food, and mm-hmm. you know, I meet Denzel Washington, Washington at the time. And again, I don't understand the magnitude of who he is. I'm right. ten. What do, what do, what do what I do know you, about acting? What exactly. do I know about the business? Right. Uh, I'm just happy I don't got to go to school. Yeah. And I know I'm in the hood, and it's like, okay, well, don't get shot. Right. And this <laughs> is my chance. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so I, I really enjoyed that experience, and I remember it being a long process. It was a long day, and I was getting used to set hours, mm-hmm. and you know, from then on, I went to do uh, two years of background work afterwards. So that was just kind of like breezing me into the business. Back, background work, what do you mean? Like background talent. So, you know, somebody who, who uh, it, it's, how would you say, I don't want to say crowd filler, but, you know, supplementing the world, the atmosphere, mm-hmm. you know okay. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Whether it's somebody walking by or sitting oh, so in the like stands. Or, exactly. Okay. Yes, they call them extras, but, okay. you know, background talent, background casting, many gotcha. different names. Gotcha. Extras. Mm-hmm. Um, so that... For me, it was just like getting into the world, and then Great Debaters, uh, still Amazing hands movie. down. Amazing movie. Thanks, man. Still, yeah. Still, uh, thank you, thank you. One of one of my uh, favorite films, to be honest with you, and and probably one of my prized uh, work experiences on set, just because it was like. That again, we went to debate camp, and then I remember like the first week, like Denzel got on us about like what it means to know our lines and to show up, because you know we we Ooh, had I'd our minds. Yeah, right. we're all. I pre- get it together quick. We I'm were all prepared, but I remember we <laughs> right. did the first rehearsal, and he said, "So none of y'all know your lines. What are you gonna do on Monday?" It was like we all went home and we Straight had to like train. Yeah, yeah. It, hey, I, I will do it too. Veteran no, in the game, like. Come on now, y'all. That's the wonderful thing, uh, and I'm so, so thankful to this day, is that Denzel was an incredible mentor in I my life. I was just going to ask you. It's so uh, crazy how our questions are blending in. I was just oh, going to ask you that. Listen, man. How he, was uh, that? He, the first week of filming, I remember he, he came up to me because there was one scene I had in particular where I'm getting ready for a uh, debate tryouts. Mm-hmm. I'm putting on the aftershave. You know, mm-hmm. I'm getting ready to go see Miss Book. <laughs> and uh, he comes up to me. He's like, hey, man. Less is more. And so I tried again. He's like, no, no, less. Less. And from then on, he was like, yeah, that's the right take. Keep doing that. It's all about uh, the shades of gray. You know, life isn't just black and white. It's the shades of gray. It's the little nuances in between. And from that, he really uh, started training my eye on what film acting is, what on-camera theatrical acting is. Because I come from a world of, of doing sitcom and sketch comedy from doing all that. So mm-hmm. it, was, it was a little bit more out there when I was doing Nickelodeon and all that to then yes. bring the performance down. The energy is a little yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. It's, it's yeah. a little bit more, you know. A little just up there and out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Buffoonery. Right. Come on, buffoonery. Which, I love which, it. Which I love it, and it's good yeah. for the kids. But mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, as an adult transitioning, I got I to gotta bring it down some. Yeah. So, I would like to see the transition. <laughs> I would like to Great see Great Debaters it. was that transition for me. Okay. Um, okay. Well, you... And then I always started to uh, <laughs> ask him questions on set, and he started noticing this curiosity within me, and uh, he bought me my first camera, got me a director's viewfinder. He said, bring a, a sketch pad every single day or a book, and bring your chair right next to me, and I'm going to teach you what I know about directing and acting. Mm-hmm. So I show up every day, and he had a whole bunch of quotes, and I was just starting like a little diary of everything that he would tell me. Mm-hmm. Uh, to even when we wrapped the film, you know, he, he would invite me to the editing bay, show me how the film's cut, show mm-hmm. me how they like put in temp score, and then how they go to the actual sound stages, mm-hmm. different things like that. And he persuaded me to go to film school, so he really has been monumental with my transition from in front of the camera to behind the camera. And also just elevating everything that I do uh, theatrical wise with my acting. And ever since then, I've been able to find the nuances since. And it was like, after that first week, I snapped into it and I was like, oh, okay, so this is what acting is about. And once that snapped for me, it, it, it broadened my horizons. He wanted, he wanted you real, real well-rounded. Rounded yeah, well-rounded absolutely. Too. I mean, I love that. you're yeah. thrown in with like Denzel, you're thrown in with Forrest, with Nate, with Journey, uh, with Jermaine. Legends. You're thrown in with all of these people who have this immense amount of talent on top of everybody who is supporting within that film as well mm-hmm. to then be like, all right, sink or swim. 
the fact of the matter that I can walk away from that film or even be recognized uh, at, at NAACP for, for Best Supporting Actor, which I'm still, dead, dead, dead. still shocked about. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the fact that it is a testament to how much uh, I had to rise to the occasion, but how instrumental all of those pieces were to my development. You know what I mean? Life is so crazy. I'm, I'm thankful for Life it, man. Life is crazy. It's the first time I've flown on a flu jet. Uh, I mean, a uh, uh, Learjet. First okay. time I was on a Learjet, I had lobster and crab and all that stuff. It was so, great. So for the people who don't know uh -huh. about how you got the best supporting actor, could you explain to them the role that it was that you played that got you that award? Yeah, it was it was Great Debaters. Uh -huh. uh, and I won for best supporting actor uh, at the NAACP Awards. I forgot what year it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, were, I was going up against uh, Tyler Perry, uh, wow. Chiwetel Echifor, I believe that's how you pronounce his name. I think Nate was also in there. Okay. Uh, and I forgot who else I was going up against, but uh, yeah, I didn't think I was going <laughs> to I mean, <laughs> was like, I, I didn't think like, I was going to win. What is that, what is that Holly right. Berry meme where she won that, um, she was like, <laughs> Yo, yes, you. Like I was, I was frozen. I, yeah. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was, I was frozen in my scene. And when they called my name, I, I, huh? I thought I was. I, I literally thought I misheard something. Maybe yeah. I thought I wanted to win. But <laughs> no, they called my name and I walked up there. I almost tripped. Mm -hmm. That's how excited I was. I was walking up the stage and I was like, Oh boy, don't trip, don't trip. Okay, I, trip. I got, I got right. it myself. Yeah. Did, oh they, did they play the scene that it was that, that got you it, or it was just over the course of the whole movie? They didn't play the scene, they just played the the, the, the movie. I think Denzel won that year too, I'm not sure. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, man, it, it, it was a special time, bro. I it was a real that. special time. I love yeah. that. So I want to talk about the movie that you're shooting here on campus, the okay. freshman year. Yeah, yep. So what can you tell us about your character, or what can we expect from the movie, per se? Sure. So. Kind of almost aligns with my initiative. Um, I'm playing this character named Andre, who pretty much grows up in this predominantly white suburb. Mm -hmm. And, and um, you know, he plays basketball and he's, he's immensely talented, mm -hmm. which is not me in real life. I don't, <laughs> I don't play sports. <laughs> Disclaimer for anyone who watches the movie don't be calling me. Right. Oh my God, the extras are showing up every single day and they're like, yo, man, let's ball. Bro. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm on the I'm on the basketball I'm team. You said I'm on the basketball team. You put an extra team. on it, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Jesus. I love so, it. I love it. Uh, but he's immensely talented and he has all of the, uh, uh, how would you say? He has all of the, um, I'm, I'm searching for the word. Mm -hmm. uh, all of the potential in the world, okay. in, in the world, to uh, to to be one of the greats, mm -hmm. uh, but he has an injury that pretty much ends, you know, his chances of getting into the school he really wants to. Mm -hmm. Kind of puts him in a slump. His grades are already in the hole, and his mom ends up sending him to uh, uh, Pride Valley, which okay. is this fictional school which mm -hmm. we've been shooting here mm -hmm. uh, at Prairie View. And you know, he gets to Pride Valley, and he's got this ego. You know, he's like, oh man, you know, what do I need to be here for? I don't really care about my grades. I just want to play ball. Mm -hmm. And the dean really gets on him and is like, no, shape up, you know, understand what it means to be here, understand what it means for your heritage. And, and it's really a culture shock for him because now he's going to this HBCU and he's never been around his culture before. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I say it's kind of like my own personal initiative where it's like he's thrown into the into the pit and now all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, Andre got swag, oh, okay. He gets a taste of what it's like. Oh, okay, he's got this, you know, dark skin, you know, beautiful thing that he's like chasing after. Oh, okay, every, you know. Uh, but within that entire experience, it it, it humbles him, and uh, yeah. and he finds his voice. He finds his stride. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm so glad to have him here. Right. Okay. So who who plays the dean? <clears throat> oh yeah, Shirley Ralph. Woo! Yeah. I seen her, I seen her, I was scared to talk to her. I got a picture with her. I was like, yeah. you should No, she's, she's sweet. She's I, super sweet. I did. I, when she first got here, she had got the car. She was talking to J.L. J.L. Uh -huh. and Koyo. She was like, hey, what's up? Da 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 da. Yeah. Hugging on speaking to him. I was like, little on me was like, hi, Cheryl. <laughs> no, nah, she's, she's super sweet. I promise you. Uh, in fact, a good friend of mine, uh, Etienne, um, is, is her son. So I happened to. I knew her like a little bit, like I had been over the house, like kind of met her, but I don't think we really like knew each other like that. So okay. it was it was <clears throat> cool to finally uh, put up scenes with her. Mm -hmm. right. And again, for me, it's it's always working with greats are are again sharpening me as an actor. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so she gave you tips. It's more like, look, you play right. Yeah. 
So if you're playing basketball and you're playing against somebody who's great, what does that do for you? Okay. Yeah, it, it, it lets you... It sharpens, yeah, it it sharpens, sharpens your you skill set, right? Because yeah. for me, it's like, you know, I could work with all the other actors, and the other actors have been phenomenal as well, but mm -hmm. here we are in this indie film where, like, I'm put into position number one on the call sheet where I can actually give back the same way Denzel had gave to me so long ago. I can teach, you know, some of the younger ones who are less experienced, like, hey, this is what you do, these are the camera setups, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So then when Cheryl comes in, it's like, oh, yeah, okay, let me let me strap on my boots again, let me get back on my grind, like, we getting serious. Mm -hmm. and, and even within those scenes, like, I felt this immense energy and this shift where it was like, okay, well, let me take what you just gave me and then give that back. And so it's always you're paying it forward, you know what I, I mean, that. generationally, or paying it forward just experience-wise. Did okay. you guys do any type of improv like back and forth? Oh, man, she almost improv her whole scene. Like, cause really? That's the thing. She's like, that good. Once you know the roots of the scene and once you know what, what our characters stand for, mm -hmm. go, play ball. Like, Vincent, uh, the director, is not precious about any of the dialogue. And most directors I've worked with aren't precious about the dialogue. It's really like, just go. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, if you know the character, what is this character going to say? What are you going to say to me wow. that's going to impact me? You know what I mean? Right. And, uh -huh. and, and she had uh, this immense amount of pride that she carried mm. um, and, and this, this love for HBCUs that she wanted to impact on her character alone. So we sat there and, and maybe within a couple minutes, almost kind of like jazz, almost kind of like freestyle rap, and it was like, mm -hmm. oh word, so that's what you're gonna do, that's what I'm gonna do, okay, well, yeah, 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 let's do that Fire. in the wide, and Fire. then we go back and forth. It. Man, that's, 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 that's the fun to that me. That is like, the fun part, that's yo, the best part jazz, of acting. It gets competitive. Huh? Jazz and acting is, <laughs> it gets is great. Competitive. <laughs> but it, it gets competitive, but where the mastery comes from is, I know she needs to shine in this moment. I'm not here to overstep your moment. Right. right. And in fact, mm -hmm. anything, Come down on me and make me feel smaller than, please, I welcome it all. Insult the shit out of me if you need to, you know what I mean? Like, I will take that because that's what my character's supposed to be. And that, within itself, once you know the roles of your characters, like, let it fly, you know? Right. Uh, oh, yeah. So I heard you talking to um, Koyo, and I um, overheard that you had a clothing line. Can you, besides, <laughs> besides filmmaking and acting, so what are your other endeavors? So... I founded a company in 2013 called Black Mouth Entertainment, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's, it was my gamer tag when I was young. Um, it's what everybody kind of called me by, and then I got my logo, you know what I mean? It's like the little, little dude with the hat on, mm -hmm. and those were things I used to tag, and it was like part of me, so when I founded my company, it was like, okay, well, what are, what are the roots, or what am I going to stand for? And I merged those two together and, and created this company called Black Mouth Entertainment, and really, what I'm all about is some of my favorite films are Jurassic Park and Back to the Future. Mm -hmm. And I'm all about imagination. And I feel like the longer we retain youth and innocence, mm -hmm. that's how we tap into our imagination. Like kids, when they you know play in the field or, or make believe, like mm -hmm. they're not worried about ego or, or anybody judging them or anything like right. that. It's only when we get older do we feel afraid to really leap and bound within our careers or our pursuits, especially artistry. Mm -hmm. So I want Blackmouth to always stand for uh, uh, immortality through youth and imagination. And with that, you know, we shoot music videos, uh, short films, developing features right now. Uh, and yes, clothing is a part of it. You know, like I've designed some merch, but I want my merch to be fly. Like, yes. you know what I mean? Like I got a, a, a champion slash black mouth jersey, you know what I mean? Okay, like okay. shirts, different things like that. And I'm still working it out. It, it, it's a work in progress because like any new endeavor in any new business you know you got to learn like what are these textures how, how are these shirts made like how do you do an overhead cost but it's really uh, sharpened my business acumen um to be able to handle my own because now i'm not just thinking about myself as an entity i'm thinking about a brand yeah and now branding as a whole now i'm always thinking about the business and now thinking of business as a whole now i could convert that to my uh acting and filmmaking and it's always again always what expanding. are those different streams mm -hmm. of income you know yeah, what yeah, i mean yeah. like We're i want to be able yeah, mm -hmm. I want to be around for a while, you know what I mean? Like, uh, all of the people I admire uh, have done very well for themselves by always self-propelling themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and as Shaq recently said, and he got this literally from um, Jeff Bezos, is like, find ways to be of service to other people mm -hmm. and watch what that does for not only your net worth, but watch what that does for, for your legacy as a whole. Right. You know what I mean? So that's, uh, again, in my business, like, how can I best service other people, but also, you know, create something for myself and create something for Blackmouth where we would stand the test of time. So when I pass, 
names is still ringing on. Mm -hmm. You know, the Egyptians say you die twice. When your uh, body passes on this earth, like when your soul detaches from your body, and then when people stop saying your name. Mm. And so I'm trying to have my name said on way longer mouth. than when my, you right. know what I mean? I love so it. it is what it I like is. It. I do too. Well, that's time, guys. That's it for the day. Definitely, definitely. Anything else you'd like to say? Yes, at Blackmouth on the Instagram, because I don't really deal with all the other profiles. If Instagram were to die tomorrow, I don't know where y'all catch me. <laughs> but just look up Blackmouth, blackmouth.com. That's how you get a hold of me if y'all want to collaborate. Just holla at your boy. Uh, other than that, I appreciate all the love. Thank you so much. Uh, sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for the platform that I could stand on. And if I could inspire and touch somebody, or, or at least, you know what I mean, like challenge somebody to be great, that's really my initiative, so I just want to send love to everybody. Send love, spread love. We need more of it in the world. All right. Oh, wow, I love that. All right, guys. All Signing right. out. See you. Yeah.